What's up guys, Sound Alchemist here with Gersh1 and we're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater <laughs> And this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you want to ask us a question about Warhammer 40k about or about anything in general, just comment down in the section below. Mm -hmm. That is what Andrew Wells did. He said, or he asked, Will the new Marines who join an original Legion now uh, bear the same characteristics as the regular Marines? Like Wolf Fangs and the Red Thirst from Space Wolves and Blood Angels respectively. Uh, yeah, so would the Primaris Marines still hold all those genetic um, flaws? Um, based on the lore, no. And that is because Belisarius Call and Gilliman have created these Primaris to be genetically immune to all these imperfections. Um, so we won't be seeing any Black Rage, no Red Thirst, no Wolfen. Um, these are basically super soldiers that are just wearing essentially the armor of their chapter that they're being sent to bolster up. Yeah, so not they're not necessarily um, uh, recruits from Fenris. No. They're not recruits from, where do the black, or the Bal. blue? Yeah, they're not yeah. recruits from Bal. They are reinforcements mm -hmm. um, who bear the, the livery and all that kind of stuff of right. their chapter. Now, they did mention that there is going to be a process to make Space Marines into Primaris. So that being said, I think they'll still keep those genetic anomalies into their Primaris form. Yeah, but it, they, again, those are called legend, right? Legends or whatever? Or no, what's that unit called? Oh, um, um, it's like ancients, there you go. They're ancients, yeah. yeah. But it, but in order for a Space Marine of like, let's say the Space Wolves to become a Primaris Marine, um, they already have to be pretty like well established right. and proven themselves as like these big epic warriors. Mm -hmm. So if it's if they've gone that long without turning into or succumbing to the Wolfen curse, then odds are that once they become Primaris Marines, it's it's even slimmer even of a chance. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with the Black Rage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Good question though. This next question is by Roman Gabara. In one of your previous was. You said that Chaos steal Gene Seed of Loyal Chapters to create more Chaos Space Marines. The question is, can Chaos Space Marines get traits of Loyalist Chapters like the Black Rage? If so, what combination would you like to see? Yeah, so uh, Traitor Marines do get those traits in that manner, or mm -hmm. there are a lot of like Blood Angel successor chapters that turn to Chaos right? because of the Black Rage and because of the Red Thirst. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, I would love to see Werewolf chaos werewolves basically yeah there's uh i saw some fan art of the thousand sons that this guy's been afflicted with something like a like a werewolf curse and he basically looks like anubis so oh that would be yeah, badass yeah, that yeah, looks yeah. pretty cool yeah next question comes from alexander schneider are any other race getting an upgrade as far as models they're probably model upgrades are probably going to come with the codex releases mm -hmm. um so sp space marines came out yesterday uh, or the pre-order pre-order the pre-order yesterday yeah. uh and then next uh, codex is gonna be probably chaos it's nurgle right or is it just yeah. chaos I, I think it's gonna be first just nurgle but uh chaos will get their their codex yeah and then after that then i'm pretty sure hopefully we're praying that they go to xenos yeah any Xenos would be awesome. They they already kind of confirmed that they want to put out a lot out or a lot of codices before Christmas. So hopefully they get a good chunk of it done. Uh -huh. Send them out. I would buy them gladly. <laughs> um, <laughs> next question. Fabian Bosch. Who has better aim? The Star Wars Stormtrooper or an orc? Probably the Stormtrooper. Yeah. Because orcs literally they just like fire around. They don't aim. They yeah. pull triggers and hope that it goes that way. Mm -hmm. uh, friendly fire is very common amongst the orcs. <laughs> Next question comes from Amicus. Where do I send my chapter lore so you guys can read it? So far the new Primaris Marines are kind of shooty. Um, except for the Reavers. But I will withhold final judgment until the Codex lands. I need more melee for my Primaris Marines. 
I heard, well, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer your question in a little bit, but I heard that the new Space Marine chapter, or the new Space Marine Codex, really paints the Space Marines as the jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. um, before, they were like the jack of all trades, but masters of none, they said. Um, but now, like, you can really take your Space Marine army and, and mold it to be competitive against pretty much any type of, um, you know, um, other army. So melee, it might not be so much as a, an aggressive melee person, but you still have the Centurions, you still have the, um, what are the ones that are specifically for melee with the Primaris? Oh, the, um, what are they called? Pro protectors or some shit like that? Some, some shit like that. Yeah, yeah those guys. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, they might not be like orcs where they're trying to like rush you or whatever, but they will like hold it down and if they get rushed, they can take people out. Mm -hmm. um, now, where do we send the chapter lore information? Uh, just send it to our Facebook page. Uh, message us on there and we'll get to it as soon as we can. We have gotten a lot lately, so there's it'll probably be a while till we get to yours, but definitely send it on over. Yeah, and we love your guys' um, lore. Uh, so definitely contact us on Facebook. And we also have a P.O. Box, which is an excellent segue to get into the new segment of the For the Greater Wall, which is... I haven't thought up of a name. <laughs> I don't know. Um, mail time, I guess, for right now. If you guys can come up with a cool name for a segment where we open up the mail that you guys give to us or send to us, then comment down in the section below. Uh, label it with something so that we know like suggestion or something mm -hmm. but we got an awesome piece of mail from one of our awesome viewers oh i kind of put out your <laughs> your address out for everybody um, but v prime sent us this awesome package and before we open it we haven't opened it yet i want to point out that he wrote all the chaos symbols all over the envelope uh, which is kind of scary because this is the Nurgle symbol and this might have contaminants that will get us sick. Hopefully it's not anthrax. Yeah, hopefully it's not anthrax. <laughs> so again, if you guys want to send us anything... Ooh, I opened it the wrong way? Yeah. yeah. If you guys want to send us anything, please do. Um, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 1507 Montgomery, Illinois 60538. It's down in the description. So if you guys uh, do commissions, art commission, painting commissions, sculpting commissions, and you want to send us some stuff so we can give yes, you a little yeah. advertising, yep. please do that. We've done it before in the past, so we will do it in the future. Yes. Oh, we have an envelope. Oh. Oh, and we have artwork. Oh, that's pretty nice. This is dope. Is this... This looks hand-drawn. So you have, so you have the the Tau, and then you have the orc head, which is on point. I have to say, an orc head is very difficult to to draw. Very jagged. Yeah, because you have like one big eye, one little eye, and sometimes you can make it look goofy, but you made it look amazing. And then you have OMS at the bottom, and your name, Vactimus Prime. I hope I said that right. Let's see. Awesomeness right here. And then you gave us a letter. I'm gonna read it out loud, just in case you throw your, your information out there. So, hey guys, what's up? From Chicago. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the awesome content and keep up the great work. Watching your videos got me back into 40K and prompted me to get some of my friends back into playing as well. That's awesome, that's what we love to hear. I wanted to see you guys, I wanted to send you guys some art and I, art that I do as thanks for the videos. It's all hand done in pen and I wanted to include the OMS logo and your chosen army symbol too. For the greater good. <laughs> no, for the greater wall. Uh, I look forward to seeing more of your videos. Vactimus Prime. P.S. I'm on YouTube and Instagram. Vactimus Prime. So go check him out. Vactimus Prime on YouTube and Instagram. We'll put links in down in the description below. But thank you so much, um, Vactimus yeah. Prime. Really, really dope art. Pretty awesome. We're going to hang this up probably um, right next to the window. Uh, I might get rid of the um, 
the flying colors poster. <laughs> <laughs> Not the flying colors. Thank you. And again, if you want to send us stuff, simply uh, send it to our PO box down mm -hmm. in the description. That's right. Let's continue. Next question. This one's by Homer Hensley. With the new rule for Gretchen, surprisingly accurate in large numbers, will I have a ghost of a chance to embarrass people with my Gretchen army that consists of 400 grots? Yes. Yeah. Basically, anything can wound anything now. So it doesn't matter what your strength of your gun is, what your toughness of the dude you're shooting at, you're always going to wound at least on a six. So if you're playing Gretchen, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and don't... don't um... Or play on the fact that people are going to see you as, like, nothing. Uh, they're going to think that, oh, they're a bunch of Gretchen, they're not going to do anything. Little do they know they can take down a flying hive tyrant. <laughs> yeah, that's what this guy's Gretchen did. Yep. That was back in 7th edition, so. Next question comes from Jarlax245. Two, four, two, four, four, I just realized that if Sound Alchemist worked out, he would be a Hispanic Superman. <laughs> I'm not gonna work out. <laughs> I'm gonna work in. Have these uh, awesome, powerful like intestines. There you go. Mm -hmm. And I'll be man super, not Superman. And he's gonna um, start a YouTube channel where he eats like bowls of rice the size of cars or some shit. <laughs> That's your superpower. Yeah. I actually watched that YouTube channel. I forget what the guy's name is, but he's like this um, Asian dude who's like a competitive eater, and that dude could put down an entire burrito in like I think under 10 seconds <laughs> yeah it's fucking crazy like, he doesn't chew he just swallows <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said next question uh, Carson Kazmiri who would win an Imperial Fist or the Ultramarines and the Imperial Fists are on the defense that's a good question as of right now I think that the Ultramarines would win just because they have their Primark um, but it wouldn't be an easy fight. The Ultramarines would get, you know, um, hurt pretty bad. Now, I'm assuming that the Ultramarines were going to get helped by all their successor chapters. Um, but if it was just like a thousand Ultramarines, a thousand Imperial Fists, and the, the a thousand Imperial Fists are behind the walls on Terra, then yeah, the Imperial yeah. Fists got it. Yeah. But yeah, I'm assuming that Gilliman, the successor chapters, all that are, are behind the Ultramarines. Next question comes from Caesar Fire Incorporated. Is there any way that the Emperor's children... Um, so is there any way that the Emperor's children that were still loyal to the Emperor could have survived after the Horus Heresy and still be classed as a chapter today? Yeah, they're called the Blood Ravens. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Uh, this one is by James Cub. Can I have cheeseburger? You can. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite uh, fast food cheeseburger place? Um, I like Wendy's. I'm going to throw Wendy's out there. Yeah, I've been to uh, In-N-Out. No, I haven't. Oh, I was about <laughs> to say, damn, I haven't even been to In-N-Out. Yeah, I hear In-N-Out is literally the best. Yeah. Um, but obviously, there's not one around here. Yeah. So I'm going to have to say Sonic. Sonic. I don't think I've ever had a Sonic cheeseburger before. Yeah, because they got like, well, the ones I usually get, it's like a double cheeseburger with bacon, and it's just like... Ooh, that sounds good. But it's only really good when they decide to actually put their time into it. Sometimes they just like throw a bun on the... It's just, <laughs> yeah. On a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. There you go. You want some ketchup? Here's a packet. The next question. Oh, I have one from Ian Schneider. Do you think GW will release older Imperial Guard regiments to revamp Imperial Guard and bring more diverse selections when you play? The Mordian, the Vosterian, the Tanith, and the Talarin? Tal Talarin? Uh, yeah, definitely, because they're doing that for the Space Marines. Because that's what the Primaris Marines are. Mm -hmm. They're just... What they're doing is they're saying, okay, we have all these Space Marine players that already have their established armies. How can we make them buy more army? Uh, or add to their armies. You bring out new um, chat or new units or whatever. Mm -hmm. In the Imperial Guard position, it would be new regiments. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, but when that would happen, I'm not sure because I don't know how many Imperial Guard players there are out there. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near as much as Space Marines. Right. Space Marines are by far the highly popular army. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're the first for everybody. Mm-hmm. Roger Rangel, what is your favorite Primaris Marine unit? 
Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go just by look since we haven't actually played Eighth Edition yet. I'm gonna say between the uh, Captain and Gravis armor or the aggressors. Yeah, I'll do the Reavers. I really like the Reavers just because of their skull motif head mm -hmm. helmet. Reminds me a lot of uh, the Call of Duty dude. What's the name? Ghost. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this question comes from Tech Inquisitor Ryan. If an orc died and released his spores on a world that was almost consumed by Tyranids, and then it was fully consumed, would the spores be able to survive on the barren world, or would they die, and the Tyranids would then be the answer to the orc scourge? To this orc scourge? Uh, so, so like, if an orc died while the Tyranid invasion is about to, be, to end... Uh, yeah, otherwise, like, so... If, like, the Tyranids are going at it, they kill all these orcs, spores get released. The spores that got released would be placed into the vats that the Tyranids use to, like, dissolve all the bio, um... Biomass? Uh, yeah, biomass. But if, like, the Tyranids have consumed the planet, they're actually in the process of leaving, and a Freebooter clan somehow, like, crash lands on that planet, and they were, and they're killed... But some spores are released, and they're, they like go into the planet without the Tyranids knowing. And the Tyranids don't really care because they want to move on to the next one. <laughs> right. Then yes, the orcs would like sprout, and the fungus would grow, and yeah, it would it would go. Yeah, it's basically uh, bad news for the orcs because I'm not sure if Tyranids would come back to a world that they've already eaten if like it repopulates. Yeah, I think they would. They're more. They're like animals, right? So they're just like making their way. And then if, if they come back, they come back. Yeah, it's like they're making their way downtown. Walking fast. <laughs> something, something. I can't remember. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Merrick Grimaldus. How many more wars for Armageddon do I have to fucking survive to show people how serious I am? Fifteen. Yeah. You got a few more to go, man. Yeah. Nig Heg. What if the Emperor did have a... Text on speech device. Um, there's a, there's a whole YouTube yeah. channel dedicated to that. So. <laughs> Check out that was it Alpha Bruza. Yeah, I think yeah. it's yeah. Joe Coon, would it be possible for the Tyranids to consume or eat a Catan that is not in its necrodermis shell, and what would happen as a result? So they're made up of cosmic dust. Mm -hmm. They're like parasites of cosmic dust. So is, is, is cosmic dust biomass? I don't oh. think there is, no. So they wouldn't, they'd probably just leave them alone. I mean, yeah, they'll see them as a threat, they'll fight, but they wouldn't actually absorb or eat them. Right. Last question. Do you have one? Yeah, this one's also by Joe Kuhn. Since Zeech is the chaos god of knowledge, would he know the true names of all the other demons? And if so, would this allow him to banish all these demons from the material universe, leading to him having free reign of the galaxy? Cool. Uh, no, he doesn't. Um, and you have to remember that Zinch, or you calling a demon's name out, banishes them from reality, not from the war. So it's not like, um, like if Zinch came into the real space, he can call as many demons out, but then you still have you yeah. know, sentient life. Yeah, they'll just go back to the war. <laughs> and if he does do this, he's going to piss off all the other chaos gods. And you don't want a three-on-one battle, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> especially if, like, supposedly Korn, with a single swing of his sword, can destroy an entire um, portion of the war. So. Yeah, OP. <laughs> yeah. That's all the time we got for you guys. We've been answering questions all day today, and we will continue for, what, three days a week? Yes. Yeah. Um, we do this three days a week, like I said, and um, keep on sending questions if we didn't answer them. We got a Patreon Instagram, Facebook, Facebook, and Twitter page, so check those out. And that's all the time we've got. He is Gershwan, Sound Alchemist. We are One Man Syndicate, and we are out of here.